Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com, and today we have a Squarespace portfolio review. And even though this is not a Squarespace website, I encourage any of you guys who don't have a website or are maybe not quite happy with their web hosting or their web provider is to sign up for a Squarespace website. And don't forget, if you use the code Adam, A-D-A-M, you will get 10% off on your subscription, which is an awesome discount. Anyway, we have Sander Vanderveen's photography or Sander Vanderveen Photography's website, and this is the landing page. The landing page is very clean. It's a little bit static. There's not a lot of info in here. I kind of feel like, you know, what's the point? Like, why are we landing here? Why don't we just land and get on that work? And that, I think, is kind of the theme with his website. Um, we land on his website when we click in to recent work, and that takes him to his portraiture of uh, women, or woman as he spells it over here. Sander's work, I feel, is very strong. I think he's got a lot of nice kind of editorial work, and he's been doing some fashion stuff, and we're going to get through that quickly. Um, there's some nice lighting going on here. There's nice composure. Um, I think that the editing is nice and solid. Um, I think that there's there's some good portrait work going on. He's, he's doing some good environmental portraiture where he's, you know, got a woman in a farmer's market. He's got a woman in uh, what looks to be like a, a landscaping situation. Another one over here. Um, a nice clean portrait. You know, this is just an ensemble of different portraits of nice looking women. Um, you know, and then it kind of goes into more of a fashion-y thing. He's got a studio shot in here. He's experimenting with some like colored dust, which looks kind of cool. Um, you know, all different kinds of stuff. All right. Now, my only critique about all this is that it's nice, but I would say pick your strongest work. I don't like landing on this as my first shot. This looks like a snapshot. This is not nearly as solid as some of the other environmental work. Um, the expression on this gal is okay, but it doesn't have that same kind of editorial strength that let's say something like this has. These are much more commercial and I would like to kind of land on stuff like these first. Um, this has a nice look too. There's a lot of negative space on the right here and this side seems a little more interesting with the reflection. Um, let's see. These two, I really like the toning. I like the overall look. This looks like it's her face is out of focus. Um, we can't have that. We cannot have portraits of people that are out of focus. So as nice as this might have as a look to it, um, it doesn't really work for me because it's out of focus. The other only other comment I would say is that, you know, it looks like he was shooting this standing up and I would say a lower angle would make her look taller and leaner. Not that she's, you know, I mean, she's skinny to begin with, but it would just accentuate her form and make her look even nicer. Um, this one, again, looks a little soft. It's a great shot. It's really cool, but it just has, you know, softness to a point where it looks like it's out of focus. Nice, nice black and white. And these two are very strong together as a pair. This one, not as strong. I mean, I like the story. You can tell that he lit it. He popped the light over here. It's a little harsh. I would have maybe brought that a little bit more on axis to kind of mitigate some of the shadowing. Um, I like the whole fashiony vibe with the big, you know, with the fancy dress. It's a little, um, a little flat with the tones here. You know, not very contrasty. Whereas this one really pops more. It's nicely lit. And there's a little bit more going on, although it's a little bit dark here. Maybe a second light or a bounce card would have been nice just to open up some of the shadow detail here. Um, this one, I would say, you know, it's like shot real close overhead. The angle doesn't really work for me. You know, she's got these cool shorts on, this, you know, fuzzy vest. And I don't know, I'm getting lost in all this, this what's happening right here in the foreground. It's basically too much foreground for me. Um, but anyway, a nice ensemble of, of portraits here, and um, there's some definitely some editorial stuff going on, and I would, I would just weed out some of the stuff that's not as strong or that's obviously out of focus. We'll go to the men's stuff, and here we got the same kind of issue. You know, start off with kind of a nice, you know, moody portrait, and then we got this, what looks to be a potentially good portrait, and, you know, the model's face is out of focus. I mean, it looks out of focus to me. Um... You know, I like these these two right here. You know, we're cu cutting a little bit close to the left, and um, you know, I've seen that in a bunch of his his shots. 
Uh, could just be the way that you're holding the camera. You can see the camera's kind of tilting a little bit to the right here. I would just straighten that out, but I like this as an environmental. Maybe just bring the highlights down just a touch on the side of his face. This is nice and solid, um, good tones, good black and white. This is nice too, but it's a little bit dark around the eyes and over here, the light's very high on his head. You can see how the, the top of his head is like very lit. And that's just maybe a matter of just bringing the light just a little bit further down um, just to, uh, to get more of that light um, you know, in the eyes over here. And we'll go to fine art and um, okay, this is a nice series. Now there's only three images in here. I don't mind that, but you know, to have all these different galleries, I think that portraiture could just be one thing. I don't think you need to divide it into men, women, and fine art. I think you could just have portraiture and pick your finest work and do it like that, or have portraits and then have editorial or portraits and lifestyle and just have the, the portraits that are just portraits and the lifestyle shots, you know, kind of separated and just keep it as that. But I don't know we need these three categories here. Same thing with the family portraiture. We've got three sets of family portraits or, you know, couples. They're all really nice. Um, and again, I think with these, you know, pick one or two that are your strongest and, um, you know, leave the other ones out. Maybe put those in a blog post. You know, we got the same thing with these two. Nice couple with their little kid, which is adorable little kid. But like, you know, this shot here of the dad to me is not as strong as this shot of the dad. So maybe you just pick that one. I like this shot of the kid with the rock, but this one I don't like as much. This has more of a snapshot kind of a feel. And same thing with these two, you know, the, her fingers are cut off. That kind of bothers me. The image is tilting a little to the right, as is this one. But this one's really cute with the two of them mimicking each other and tells more of a story. So... Again, I think it's just a matter of, you know, really editing it down. Same thing with this shot. You know, it, I don't understand why this needs to be a separate link. I think that the family portraiture could just be one category. You pick, one, you know, two shots from each of these portrait sessions and you put them in there. Um, I like the look of these two. I like the lighting on these two. This is pretty, but um, it doesn't tell the same story. You know, this is the shot you deliver to to, to her, but maybe as far as the, the storytelling in the portfolio, I think these are the stronger two images. We'll go into test shoots now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six links, and then an archive link. Again, I feel with the test shoots or the model test shoots that these could be the kind of thing where you pick one or two of the strongest images. Um, you know, something like this, I would say like this first image here and this third image here probably my favorite although the focus is off again so that's got to go um you know pick one or two from each of these models and then just use those and um yeah these are nice you know just one or two again i can't tell i think the focus might be off on there so we really got to work on our focus here guy um but you know you you you've got nice you got nice framing um the editing is really solid i love this one i think this profile with the great little hair palms is really really sweet and adorable uh, this one doesn't really do much for me um it's just you know there's just not much connection going on there not much thing um let's see julie um you know it's cool you know you got a topless gal um good for you no I'm just kidding um, no no I, I look these are these are nice portraits uh, nice test shots it's a great space but um, you know again I think just one or two of these would would just be stronger and same thing with Nikita you know maybe one or two of these um, this is a little bit close over here I'd maybe want a little bit more space um, same thing with here it's just I, I don't know if you crop these intentionally so close like that um, but you know, like this could potentially be in the portrait category. Um, then we go into archive and these first three shots, they don't really, they don't do much for me. And if they're not your strongest and you consider them archival, then just take them out. Um, you know, same thing with this. This to me is like an Instagram shot, heavily visco cammed with the grain. Um, this one has the potential, but if you see here, the horse's face is in focus. Her face is a little soft and hers is way soft. And this is a, really a case of just setting a focus point a little bit further back, choosing like, you know, closing down your aperture a little bit more so that maybe you're at F5, 6 or something like that. So you get all of the faces in focus. 
Um, something like using like a longer lens where you can really get the compression and get, you know, the background to look really soft and also get that, that nice focus. Cause I want to see this, you know, this ensemble, this grouping, as they say, I like this portrait. Um, I think that could be in your portrait category. I think that this one is also a nice portrait. There's something I like a lot about this one as well. The eyes are great, you know, with her just, you know, you got the selective focus where you're really just locked on the eyes. Um, yeah, this is okay. Again, this is more to me like an, an Instagram shot or it should be part of a series. And, um, you know, this one, you know, it's a nice portrait, but I think out of the two, I think I like this one a little bit better. Um, although the lighting on this is nice and her hair looks fantastic. Um, then we've got some commissioned work. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven categories. Um, I, I honestly feel that you could basically put these all into one grouping. And like I said before, you know, this is one image. So now I've got to click, and it's a nice image, and it's it's really solid. It's good commission work. But then I've got to go here. Now I see your you know, environmental portrait co covers, and these look great. You can see that this has been clearly edited differently um, and I think it's a stronger edit um, it's also straighter than it was in in your portfolio and I think that that's just something to think about here um, so this you know these could also be put in with that as maybe tear sheets um, you know these to me are more like um, corporate headshots or you know headshots um, these are environmental as well just not as strong as I would say as some of the other work um, these, these are okay too, you know, um, I like them. I like the whole look and the toning that you got going on there. I don't really know why this has its own category. I mean, I'm sure it's one of your clients, but it, there's not a lot of context for this. It just kind of looks like a nice portrait, which you can put in your portrait category. Um, you know, you got a magazine cover and a few subsequent portraits. I would say the magazine cover that goes in your, um, in your tear sheets or in the commission category. And then the other images, maybe you build a blog post with these five images and you talk about the magazine cover and then you show some other images you shot while you were doing that. I'm not really sure what, oh, these are, uh, those are like field glasses, but they got cut off over here. And that's something I would look at because it's a little bit confusing, um, you know, for, for me to understand what that is. It took me a, a minute over there. Um, yeah, these, they're just not as strong, you know, they're just, you did this for a client, but um, it doesn't really show your best work. Um, and uh, some interiors, you know, the interiors are nice, but it, you don't strike me as an interiors photographer. And, um, you know, they're not, they're not on par with a lot of your portrait work. Uh, let's go into the information. Okay, you've got a contact, yeah, that's a nice photo. Um, you know, a little bit about you. You certainly could put more information in there, a little bit more about yourself, but this is nice and clean. And then the blog I looked at before, and there's not a lot of info. You didn't really talk about, um, you know, about this so much. I mean, this is a cool photo and, and I think it's great, but I think you could definitely elaborate a little bit further. There's just not a lot of information in your, in your blog section. I think you could certainly explore that more. And I think that what you can do is if it were me, I would recommend you take this commission section and maybe you, you divide it into commissioned as, as that, those are your tear sheets. And then maybe you have some other client work in there as well, or you have two sections, you know, tear sheets and client work, boom. And you pick your best stuff out of this. And then the stuff that's not as strong, that goes into blog posts. Family portraiture, rather than having three separate links to shoot on, pick, you know, two images from each set and put that in there. Um, portraiture, men, women, fine art. I think that this is one category. I think you just call it portraiture or you call, Port, you, you divide it into portraits and lifestyle or portraits and editorial and that's it instead of having to kind of go through all these different deals test shoots the same kind of thing I feel like you know you just pick one or two from these different shoots the strongest images that you have and then if you want to really elaborate and put a lot of images up there you do that in a blog post where you talk about working with you know an individual model or an individual shoot so 
there you have it. So Sander, Sander, Sander Vanderveen Photography, um, I think that you got some really, really strong work in there. I really enjoyed looking at your portfolio, and I think that with some editing, if you put some time to this, I think you could make your website a lot easier to navigate, and you could really put your strongest work forward. Um, if any of you guys want to submit your websites for review, please send them to brooklynphotoworks at gmail.com and just put the title as Squarespace Portfolio Review and I will do my best to take a look and get around to doing an edit. Don't forget if you guys sign up for Squarespace and you want to save 10%, Use the code ADAM, A-D-A-M. So it's squarespace.com slash ADAM. Boom, gets you an automatic 10% off. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And we'll see you soon.